Matt Walsh, Adam Gantier. Who is the better lead singer for the band Three Days Grace? Or you know what? Better yet, how about this? Who is the better frontman for the band Three Days Grace? That's right, we'll decide that right now, here today, in this video. Let's go. Three Days Grace, the band, actually started in 1992. They didn't go by the name Three Days Grace, they went by the name Groundswell. They started in the Norwood, Ontario, Canada area. The thing is, it was 1992, and these guys were grinding, playing backyard parties, just small little club scenes, nothing major. They started out literally from the bottom. I really find it awesome to go back to an artist or band's roots. So think about it, Three Days Grace going by Groundswell at that time in 92 when they got their start. Do you know who some of the hottest acts were in 1992 musically? Billy Ray Cyrus, huge in 92. Criss Cross, and Vogue, Sir Mix-a-Lot, Color Me Bad. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. There were some huge acts in 92, a lot of them pop, some of them hip hop, but our band Three Days Grace, the band we know and love, that's when they were getting their start as well. So the band Groundswell played from 1992 to 1995. Now, I've read a few reasons why, but I couldn't find a real definitive concrete answer why they broke up in 95, but they regrouped, got back together in 97, and at this point, they were gonna take things serious. They were now Three Days Grace, Neil Sanderson on drums, Brad Walsh on bass, and my man, Adam Gantier, on guitar and lead vocals, they were about to get it going. Once the guys got back together in 97, they had a ton of material they had been working on. They started working with this guy named Gavin Brown. Now, Gavin Brown was a music producer out of Toronto, Canada. Now, Gavin heard all this material and he pretty much cherry picked everything he thought was good and everything he thought would help the band become successful. So they ended up working on a demo. Pretty much, Gavin helped them polish up all their songs that he had picked and they put it in a demo which they presented to EMI Music Publishing Canada. Now the record label loved what they heard from Three Days Grace. And you know what happens? What happens when we love something or like something? We want more. And absolutely, they wanted more. And with the help, with Brown's help, they created the song, I Hate Everything About You. First song I ever heard by Three Days Grace, and probably many of you, because that would be their first big American hit. But when they created that song, it wasn't in America yet, but it helped them get a ton of attention around Canada and tons of labels wanted to sign them. So with all this attention they were gaining, it was no doubt they were on the right path. Absolutely, they were on the right path. A guy named Barry Weiss, he was the president at the time for Jive Records. They ended up signing Three Days Grace. Not only that, they were also, in addition, signed to Zamba. The guys from Three Days Grace came down from Canada to the States to work on their debut album. They did half the album in Massachusetts, they completed the other half of the album in New York. They ended up releasing this album, it was a self-titled album, July 22nd, 2003. 2003 was an awesome year for me, and it was an awesome year for music. But when this album was released, and their lead single, I Hate Everything About You, hit the US airwaves, it was it. The guys just started a fire. You no, know, I Hate Everything About You was the single. That's what got the band signed, because that was on their demo. That's what got them recognized, and thanks to that song, the band is where they're at today. But think about it. This album was huge. I was in high school. That song was huge. I remember thinking, oh, my first love, high school, that that was the woman I was going to be with forever, and, you know, we were together, and then we weren't together, and then my heart's broken, then it's not, and then it's like, that song was the soundtrack to that time in my life. Amazing song. But that wasn't the only great song off this album. You know, a few other songs off the album like Home and Just Like You were amazing songs. They were some of their singles and Wake Up, all amazing songs. I can, I tell you what, Just Like You, I can remember. Weird music video, but not just that. I can remember cruising around Pasadena, Texas, south of Houston with my buddy Adam in his 76 Nova. And he was always cranking that song, Good Times, Thanks to Three Days Grace. It didn't take long for the band to get hot. I mean, that album release, they were hot. They were on fire. Torn around with bands like Hoobastank, Nickelback, Trap, even Evanescence. They were opening acts for them. And I'll be honest, every one of those I just named, aside from maybe Nickelback, even though I'm not a huge fan, album sales and popularity, they were opening for those acts, but it wasn't long before they would surpass all those acts. You know, if Three Days Grace wasn't already on top of the world, which they were after their debut album was released and everything they were doing, they got to be in the movie Raise Your Voice, it was a Hillary Duff movie, but they got to perform two of their hit singles, Home and Are You Ready? 
pretty damn cool if you ask me. It was in 2005 that it kind of got to the forefront that Adam Gontier, the lead singer, had developed an addiction to Oxycontin. Now, I'm telling you right now, opiates are no joke. No matter what they are, whether they're prescribed or they're off the street, they're no joke and they can put you in a bad place basically because your desire to feel like you need them. And trust me, again, we can go down this road later, but I'm not speaking from ignorance. He was in a bad spot, but thanks to family and friends, he got himself into an addiction program and it helped him. But in this place, during this time, he was writing some great material, which play a big role in the success of their next studio album. So around the time they were touring for their debut studio album, Barry Stock had joined the band and he was their new lead guitarist. Now, this made the band a quartet. So it was on June 13th, 2006 that the album 1X was released by Three Days Grace. This was an amazing album. This has got to be, I tell you what, as rock and roll music has evolved, there's been less and less great albums to lean on to say that was a great album, that is a classic. But no matter what nobody says, 1X by Three Days Grace is a classic rock album. So 1X hit number two on the Canadian rock charts and it hit number five on the US charts, the Billboard 200. But you want to know what? Something even more amazing. You know, drug addiction does not, does not at all discriminate on whether you're famous or whether you're homeless or black or white, male, female. It doesn't discriminate. Drug addiction has no feelings. Adam, instead of participating in NA meetings, because he was just fresh out of treatment not long before releasing the album, he decided to start Three Days to Change, and this was a free tour he was doing with the band. He was going to drug rehabilitation centers, detention centers, homeless shelters, anywhere he could go to try to reach people that may be suffering from the same type of disorders. Man, this guy, I give him a lot of credit for that, and the band for standing behind him. The song Animal I Become was the first lead single released for the album 1X, but man, there were some awesome singles off this album. Pain, freaking amazing song. I, I jammed this entire album, but Pain was probably my favorite song for about two months before I transitioned to Never Too Late, which was their other lead single. These songs were amazing, but it wasn't just that. This entire album was freaking awesome. If you're a Three Days Grace fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you're just a rock fan in general, if you've never heard this album, go hear it. I mean, the lead singles, they're all awesome. The song Riot, awesome. Time of Dying, over and over again. Let It Die, One X, all freaking awesome songs. This entire album is amazing. Again, like I said, it's a classic album. If you never heard it, go listen to it. I swear I could listen to that entire album. And there's not many of them I can say. Thank you, Three Days Grace for 1X. So for me, 1X is my favorite Three Days Grace album of all time. And that's saying a lot because I love all their albums. But September 22nd, 2009, they released their third studio album, Life Starts Now. Had four amazing singles off of it. Lost in You, Break, World So Cold, and The Good Life. Loved every one of them. Had awesome time with that album. Played it everywhere I went as soon as it came out. Again, another great album by Three Days Grace. Another home run. On October 2nd, 2012, they released their fourth studio album, Transit of Venus. And again, these guys, you could see the evolution of the band by this album. I mean, Adam's evolution as an individual, the rest of the guys, they were all evolving. Musically, appearance-wise, everything was changing. They were actually on a great path. I think they were well on their way to being one of the greatest bands, especially of their generation. When they released this album, Chalk Outline, The High Road, and Misery Loves Company were their three singles, and they were amazing songs. And again, another great album by the band, Three Days Grace. So this is the part I really hate to talk about, and that's because on January 9th, 2013, just a few weeks before Three Days Grace was set to co-headline a tour with Shinedown, Adam Gontier announced that he was leaving the band. I mean, it was so abrupt, so unexpected, nobody really saw that coming. And the thing that sucked was there was not a lot of reasoning giving at the moment. So with not a lot of options, the band Three Days Grace did commence to do their tour with Shinedown and P.O.D. They brought in My Darkest Days lead singer, Matt Walst. Matt Walst happened to be the brother of Three Days Grace bassist, Brad Walst. So it wasn't like a big adjustment period to a new lead singer. The guys knew each other. So easy transition in that aspect. But we didn't know. Was this temporary? How long was it going to last? What were we to expect moving forward from Three Days Grace? So it's been 10 years since Matt Walsh has been with the band. That's a long damn time to be with the band. So they've been torn. They've released three albums with Matt. 
Human, Outsider, and Explosions most recently. I'll be honest, the first album, Human, I knew they had a lead singer. I knew they were releasing their first album without Adam as the front man. And I'll be honest with you, the two singles, Painkiller and I Am Machine, I thought they were good songs. Had you told me that was any other band, not Three Days Grace, I would say that's great. But as much as I like the songs, I had a hard time wrapping my head around it. That was Three Days Grace. It wasn't Adam singing and that kind of bothered me. That second album they released, Outsider, with Matt at the front, at the helm, lead singer, front man. The song The Mountain, another all right song. I'm not, I can get behind that song. I don't got a problem with it. But, and I may be crossing the boundary here, but the thing was, the two singles off of Human, that single off of Outsider, and pretty much all the other songs I've heard with Matt, it's kind of like the comparison to ACDC. They say a lot of their songs sound similar. That's the feeling I get with the songs they've done with Matt. And I mean no disrespect by it, but they sound very similar. And I apologize for that. Like I said, 10 long years, Matt's been at the helm. The guys are still out doing their thing and people are still paying to go see the shows. Now, would I go see Three Days Grace right now if they showed up in my town? I don't know, because I love the songs. And I love the guys in the band and nothing against Matt. You know, I got a lot of respect for him. He's doing a great job. But I've just been waiting 10 long years for that day to say, Adam is back with Three Days Grace. New album coming. I've been waiting for that. Don't know when or if it'll happen. I know one thing though, in April this year, 2023, they were doing a show, Three Days Grace with Matt. And Adam came on stage and sang two songs with the band, Matt singing backup, or even they were splitting off verses. But they sang Never Too Late and they sang Riot. And I swear, just the video gave me goosebumps out of my mind. I could imagine if I was there at that show. But again, Matt's still the guy as it stands today. So again, that question, who's the better front man for Three Days Grace? I can tell you right now, if you ask me, I'm gonna say Adam, no hesitation. Because that was the guy, that was the original man. That was all the songs and greatness that came from Three Days Grace. He was the man at the helm with the rest of the guys in the band. So Adam's my answer, no doubt. Drop in the comment section who your answer is. I'd be hard pressed to hear anybody say anything but Adam. But I can also hear him follow it up with, Matt has filled in nicely. And I can also follow up by saying that. Matt has filled in nicely. Again, I don't mean this as a put down to Matt or what the guys are doing now, no disrespect at all. But without Adam at the helm, to me it's not three days grace. Might as well call him something else. We know that's never gonna happen. And I know the guys got a lot of pride in what they're doing, even with Matt at the helm. But again, for me it's Adam, who is it for you? Again, thank you guys for watching. This is an awesome video, I had fun making it. Thank you very much for listening. Again, like and subscribe if you like the content. It'll help me grow. Put me out to a more vast audience on YouTube. Again, thank you guys. Go out. Go for something big. Do something great in your life. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm out.